Hello everyone, this is Seb from Interface, and I wanted today to talk about object recognition and TUIO, T-U-I-O. That's the protocol which will enable you to create an object recognition-based experience with an interface uh, based on the hardware that you may have, which is TUIO enabled, TUIO compatible. Uh, right now, I'm on my workstation. I don't have any touch table uh, like the ones we mentioned in our help center article. So I am going to use this simulator, which you can download on the official to your website. The experience running behind is the sample you can download from the help center article. It goes through two modes and in this new version, a third mode. So I'll try to explain the different ways uh, you have to work with objects. So let's go with, uh, in the first case, you have a certain amount of objects. You don't know how many and they will do mainly the same things, mostly the same thing. So I'm going to add object number zero here, maybe object number one, number three, number 16. We actually don't care much about the ID. They all have the same template, right? In this mode one, uh, we will have a notion of position. So you see, if I go across the board, my object rotates automatically to face the user. And the rotation actually will enable us to select the menu. So now if I go back to the top, I'm facing the users in front of me. Uh, and then if I scroll the list, I can open an object, play with it with my with touch as usual. But if I try to click on these buttons, it does nothing because they are not meant to do that. If I want to switch to this kiosk here, I need to rotate my object physically uh, on the table. So that's one way of building a table interaction. Uh, let me reset the board here and go to the next mode. So as written here, you can use swipe gestures to uh, navigate between the scenes. Swipe left, right. Okay, uh, in this one, we have actually a full control on the rotation. By the way, in the simulator, left click moves the object, right click rotates the object, pretty convenient. So now, how do I select wall or kiosk? I will actually use the finger or the mouse here. So same idea, I can use the fingers and the touch to select the, the items in this menu. I cannot move it because I need to move it using my real physical object. And then it moves entirely the object. So it's a different way of uh, using this template, right? And I will switch back to edit mode to explain exactly how it works. Again, if I add another object, same ID, full control on the orientation, All right? So these are what we call the unknown IDs or non-predefined IDs, where actually I can use any ID, I don't care. Everything is going to work here. Now let's, uh, let's have a look at the last scenario, which is what we call the predefined IDs. So what if you have three, four, five objects always available around the table, and every single object has a different mission, a different purpose. Right now, I'm going to add object number one, and I get uh, a specific menu with five pictures, <coughs> which are actually some samples based on walls, right? So the walls projects built by interface uh, users, right? Like these ones. If I add object number two, now I get the kiosk projects. You can see we have a bit more uh, items in, in the menu here. And if I add object number three, I have only four objects, which are the tablets project. If I try to add object zero, nothing happens. Because in Composer, I define only three IDs to be used, one, two, and three. Okay, let's go in Composer and have a little look at these three modes. So mode one, Actually, I'm going to reset this one here and reload the scene. Yes, very good. So let's look at this. The first one here, the TU tag interface asset. Um, we have these properties which enable to set the TU port by default always 3333. The experience width and height on TU, the X and Y coordinates are given between 0 and 1. By doing this, you do not need to add a converter to position your object. So when you have your template, which 
is empty here right now because I have zero object. Let me add an object here. So when I do have this object, the X and Y are going to be bound directly to the X position and Y position of the object. No need to multiply this value by the size of your project, thanks to these two properties here. I'm using a full HD resolution right now. Talking about the template, in here we have, so we have only one kind of big template in this collection. That's a pin board, which is fed by the object list of our two tag interface set with one single template. Right? This is just a debug list on the side, just to see exactly what's going on. In this template, we may have some bindings right, on the symbol ID, like the number here in the center. If I put another object here, I have object number two. This is based on the symbol ID, which is basically the tag ID of the object. And we can also use the angle. So we do have this um, toggle button here, the menu orientation. This one has a checked value, which is bound on the Y position. So depending on how high the object is on the table. And with a converter, we look at the center. So 1080 divided by two to say if this should be checked or not, which will animate the rotation of the object at playtime when we cross the middle of the screen. OK, let's have a look at node 2. So in this one, it's actually a bit simpler, right? Because we have the same kind of template, except at the root of the template, the group itself, in addition to the x and y, we have the angle. So the angle of the group here, group number 2, is bound. So everything will rotate with this object. And within our group, we have our collections, we have the buttons, we have everything which will be rotating at the same time. Right? So that's another way. And in the end, these two are very similar. Whatever object you put on the table, like object 30, get object 30 here. Let's focus a bit on this mode, predefined IDs. So this first interface set doesn't have predefined IDs. So this one will listen to all the objects, and you can see that in these previous scenes, we are using the object list of two tag IA, that's the first one here. For this scene, I have created a copy of my interface set, and this one has used predefined IDs, one, two, three. It means a few things. Uh, first, if I put 1, 2, and 3, I get a few things. If I put 9, I get nothing. Right? The advantage of this is that it enables you to design your objects. And actually, let me just change this one. Let me make this bigger. So you can see the objects, even if they are not located on the table. right? And you can create these objects one by one, very different, without having to put everything in the same template and hide and show things depending on which symbol ID we're looking at. Let's say I wanted to have a fourth object which would be way simpler. Uh, I'm going to use a, a very basic shape. Let's go 300, 300. I would just add a little white rectangles to track the orientation. So something like this. Group this. And I will say this group now, I'm going to bind its x and y position to our list in the predefined IDs. Right now I have just three items. Let's say I want a fourth item. So in here, I'm going to add number four. Or well, actually, let's use, uh, I don't know, 24. Let's go with ID 24. Now back to my object, I have four items here. And I can use my object number four, which already has the ID. It has been preset in this data feed based on this predefined ID string property available on the interface set. So I can use the X, I can use the Y, which by default are 
outside of the scene. So it enables you to make your design. And I will use the angle as well. By the way, for your design, these are the two properties. You've seen me updating these ones. So if you put zero, it's in the scene, doesn't really help. Uh, let's go with minus 300. So it's outside of the scene. You can still work on your design. OK, let's go in play mode. Switch to the simulator, uh, still object 1, 2, 3, and then 20 does nothing. And 24 brings us our nice design, and it rotates. So that's it about for this video. Difference between same templates for all the objects, where maybe you could add some conditions on the binding. If symbol ID equals 3, then put a red circle. Uh, and it works well in this case if your main design is the same and you just want to adjust a little bit based on the ID. Or if you have really different templates, as we have here, these three have the same models but different content. They're actually using different Excel files here, the wall, the kiosk, etc. And this one is a completely different template, look and design. Using the predefined IDs enables you to make this design in advance and avoid duplicating the content in a big template. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any question, feel free to contact our support team or go in the community. We have lots of threads talking about object recognition. The last thing I want to mention, all the information I've been talking about is in this article using tangible objects, aka object recognition. It includes a reference to our hardware partners like iFactive, Prometheus, Interactivescape, Displax, providing touch tables to your enabled to do object recognition. Uh, I also mentioned here the link to uh, the to your website and to the simulator, which is pretty useful to make your tests. And you can download the sample at the end of the, of the page.